Welcome, this is Shallow from Spooks. Um, quick tutorial on um, uh, uh, a good way of importing a 2D logo into uh, Lightwave uh, to create a 3D logo of it. From the Benelux Lightwave uh, uh, resource website, um, I got a couple of questions of people asking me. They've seen some tutorials, uh, but always when they're using a logo, it's always different, or there's always something going on which the tutorial didn't cover. Um, I'm going to show you a way that I'm using like 60 or 70 percent of the times, and it works for me. Um, it always depends on the logo. Um, sometimes you need to build the logo from scratch, and and if you have a good EPS file, you can import it. And but sometimes that's even more trouble than just creating it from scratch. Um, but I'm going to show you how to import an EPS file, uh, uh, clean up the logo and, and the troubles that you might run into uh, uh, when creating the 3D logo. So I'm going to show you the, um, the logo that we're going to use. It's this one from this company here. They provided me with an EPS version of this. Um, we're going to go right at it because I want to keep it under 10 minutes because I want to put it on YouTube as well. Um, so hop into Modeler, <coughs> go to uh, File, and import an EPS file. Leave everything standard. That's what I usually do. Um, sometimes you need to uh, uh, have auto access drill on or whatever, but in this case, uh, we're going to leave it as as is. So go to images um, and have the logo. Press OK. Press A to fit on screen. Um, as you already can see, uh, you might have you might might already think okay I have some extra stuff in here I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with that um, trial and error basically first we're gonna start in point mode by selecting the text down here because I don't need it delete it then in uh, polygon mode here um, I'm gonna ch pick in a perspective view I'm gonna click on the logo and, and I already have a big rectangle I'm gonna delete it that's good. It leaves me basically with the logo I want, uh, <coughs> and um, it looks like you're ready to go. Extrude it and uh, bevel it a, a bit, and uh, you you might already have the logo and surface it. Um, there is there is a catch here though. Um, if I select in the perspective view this side and press the right bracket key, um, it looks like I've got one polygon selected. Nice. Uh, now if I go to the other side and press the right bracket key, I've got one polygon selected as well. That's good. That didn't happen the last time I uh, I uh, I tried this. The the thing I, uh, the 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 problem I had. Oh no no no! It's not. I already see the problem here. As you can see, I already have. I think I've selected everything. I have 51 polygons selected. And what I want, I want to have two polygons. One for that side and one for that side. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you how the, the what, what a quick solution is uh, for solving this. I'm gonna deselect everything with the slash key. I'm gonna in perspective mode. And I'll zoom in a bit. Um, so you can have a look. I'm gonna choose that polygon and that one. I have got two polygons selected now. I press Ctrl C. I press the slash key again to deselect everything. I'm gonna simply delete everything and paste back the the two polygons. Now. Um, what I'm ending up with now is two polygon logo, and that's a good start uh, for creating a new logo. Uh, we could extrude this, um, but um, if you look closely here, there is some overlapping things going on. And what also is important, if you import an EPS file, always press M for merging points. Uh, press OK. Because as you can see here, now it's only two uh, points eliminated, but there's uh, there's al always points overlapping each other, and 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 merging the points before doing anything else is very good practice. Solving this issue here, and you have to solve it because if you want to bevel it or you want to do anything else with it, this is going to give you problems and it's going to look really bad. But solving this is easy. I'm going to press Control T on the PC, Control T on the PC, and I think it's Apple sign Mac, uh, Apple's uh, sign T for the Mac. Uh, which allows us to draw, uh, drag points, and I'm just simply going to drag that one into place, something like that, and then I'm going to zoom out, um, center on the other one, 
can basically do the same. I'm just gonna drag this point up there. This should be safe to start uh, extruding it now. Um, so I'm gonna go into multiply, extrude, or press Shift E. I'm gonna extrude a little bit by uh, holding the Control key to constrain your um, uh, your axis. Um, that looks good. Um, yeah, going back to the website. So the right side is red, the left side is black. So I'm gonna choose in polygon mode this side. Use the right bracket key. Press Q. Name is red. Can I use red? Uh, give it some spec. And uh, that one is done. Choose this one. So right bracket key to select them all. Press Q for surfacing. Black. Uh, and okay, deselect, and we've got a good start for the logo. Um, now you can see here some. It's a little bit faceted. Um, you could have, when importing the file, you could have used Fine or Super Fine, and this will be very, very uh, smooth. You can divide it by going uh, multiply, uh, divide, subdivide it. Um, that will make a smooth edge, just depending on what your customer wants. Perhaps he, he wants this. Right? It's, it always depends on what the customer wants. Now, a very good practice, though, is if you look, have a look at it here um, in perspective mode, um, it, the corners are very sharp. In real life, that doesn't happen. Also, when lighting this in Lightwave layout, um, it's not going to look very good because if you're going to look at it from an angle, it's going to look basically as you see it here. You can put some shine on it and stuff, but nevertheless, it's going to look as it looks here. A good practice here um, is to bevel your sharp edges, give it a little bit of rounding on there because it's going to catch highlight, it's going to catch the light. Um, and in this case, we'll be pretty good off with rounder the tool rounder, multiply, rounder, pressing N for numeric. Um, in this case, you have to be very careful here on top because those that's a really sharp polygon and if you go too far for your inset, it's going to overlap and then you have to uh, up and go into point, mo point mode and, and, and re-edit that so that it, it um, uh, you don't have any overlapping uh, geometry. So in this case, the standard stuff here rounding two polygons and an inset of three millimeters looks good to me so I'm gonna choose that and if I zoom out a little bit now you can already see some of the highlights right here and it's gonna be here as well it, it catches the light on the on the perhaps we should have an end down here perhaps we should have used four or five millimeters uh, so the, the edge is a bit sh uh, wider but it catches the light really nice now um, one thing I've noticed is that there's a little bit space here in between now, but that's that's an easy solve as well. Because if I zoom in here, you see there's just a little bit of space there. So I'm gonna in polygon mode uh, select a couple of polygons on the right side, use the right bracket key to select them all, use the Alt key, just uh, press the Alt key and, and hold it, and then with your cursor keys just move it into place, and you're done. Now you have a good logo that you can use in 3D um, uh, rendering and stuff, and in movies or whatever you want to use it for. You can size it safely, you can um, do lots of stuff with it. It's a clean logo now. So I hope this helps. And again, this is like 60 or 70% of the times the, the procedure I use to uh, create a 3D logo from a 2D logo. Right? If you have any questions, just pop them on the PLR website. Uh, or on new tech uh, forums, I'm, I'm there as well. Um, just let me know. This was Charlotte from Spooks.